Hello and welcome back to Prom Circle. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a roundup of events happening in the world of AI over the past week. And I want to start with CES. CES is one of the biggest events for electronics, technology, cars, and all of these announcements coming out from CES this year was all about AI. So from the very smart use cases to some of the ridiculous ones, uh, but I want to take a look at some of the highlights that are specifically about generative AI. Now, the very first one I'm going to talk about is Rabbit R1. Now, this device is essentially an attempt at reimagining mobile phones, moving away from sort of an app based system to utilizing natural language to communicate with tools, to perform tasks and things like that. And the demo was really amazing. And I'm going to be showing you a very little clip. I want to take my family to London. It's going to be two of us and a child age 12. We're thinking of January 30th to February 5th. Can you plan the entire trip for me? We like cheap non-stop flights, grouped seats, a cool SUV, and a nice hotel that has Wi-Fi. Exploring ticketing options to make your trip a reality. For your trip, I found various flight options, a range of hotels to choose from, and car rentals available. Please confirm each option individually for further details and booking. So it's all been planned out. I just confirm, 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 and that's it. Could you come up with a schedule for fun things to do while I'm over there? On it. I have prepared a detailed travel plan for your trip. In summary, you will be exploring London's iconic landmarks, visiting museums, enjoying delicious meals at local restaurants, and experiencing the vibrant atmosphere of different neighborhoods. Navigation details are also prepared, and I can help you book tickets for any events you'd like to attend. R1 just planned the entire trip for me. That's awesome. But it seems like this is a little bit too intense. Can you plan an easy schedule for us? Sure, I'm working on it. Please take a look at it and let me know what you think. It gave me a more relaxed schedule every day with all the details. Sounds really good. And I just confirmed that. I can foresee a wonderful trip. Oh, funny seeing you here, Rick. Let me take a look. Never gonna give you up. Playing now, enjoy. What? Am I getting Rick Rogue in my own keynote? Let's move on to the next one. This is what I got in the fridge. Can you make me a nice dish? That's low in calories. Let me see. How about a green garden omelet? It's a delicious and low calorie dish that combines the freshness of broccoli and cabbage with the creaminess of eggs. Here's a simple recipe for you. Nice. It recognized all the stuff and gave me the actual recipes. Rabbit Eye can also help you with your documents. Here's a table I've been working on for job questionnaire. Can you create an additional column that matches candidates who mentioned Rabbit in their questions about how they found us? Sure, let me take a look at the table and add the matching column for you. I've processed the table and sent you an email with the results. Okay. And next up is Volkswagen bringing ChatGPT to their cars. Let's take a look at the demo. Hello, Ida. Do you think a kilt is formal enough for a red carpet event? According to ChatGPT, people regard kilts as elevated dress suitable for formal affairs. Fantastic. Find me the nearest kilt shop. Okay. And Ida, play Scottish Playlist. I'm playing Scottish Playlist. Kilt it is. The VW ID7 with ChatGPT. So what you're beginning to see is organizations being able to connect their large language models to tools and existing applications that exist, workflows and all of that stuff. And it's the same thing that's going to be happening across the board with most organizations trying to build tools like this. But it was really exciting to see this. Um, very, very fun announcement. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of these assistants make their way into our homes, our cars, uh, you know, because we know obviously that they're much, much smarter than what we currently have today. All right, now the next thing that was making the waves last week, it actually came a little bit towards the end of the week. Sam Altman and Bill Gates were talking the future of OpenAI, GPT-5, and robotics. They talked 
uh, for 30 minutes. It was a very, very interesting podcast. And basically, Sam Altman previewed some of the things that they're thinking about uh, for open AI moving forward. I think the biggest thing they talk about, obviously, is more multimodality, you know, speech in, speech out, images. And he talked about video. And this is something that's going to be quite exciting. What happens with video? Can we generate videos? Can we uh, modify videos in a specific way and things like that? So that seems to be something that they're thinking about. The other thing that he talked about is personalization, making ChatGPT and these tools more uh, personalized to each individual. Um, so learning more about you and using the information they gather about you to make the responses or tailor the responses a little bit better. Um, the other thing that they also talked about was connecting these LLMs to um, everyday tools. So your calendar, your CRMs, your, you know, drive uh, hailing apps or, you know, planning your, your travel, all of that stuff. How do we bring LLMs to connect with our everyday tools? Now, we're already seeing this with a lot of things that are happening. We're seeing it with GPTs, custom GPTs. But I think when they start building it natively into uh, GPT, they, they're going to make it even much, much easier. But one of the things that was really exciting to, to listen uh, for from Sam Altman was his um, talk about robotics. Now, um, as you know, OpenAI is a research organization. It started as a research organization, uh, researching AI and different use cases for AI. Large language models are just one aspect of what they've been working on. So one other thing he talked about was the fact that they've been working on robotics. Uh, he talked about the fact that they needed to take a little bit of a break from that, but they're making more and more investments. So stay tuned to see what's going on with robotics, because this might be interesting. He talked about the fact that, okay, you know, the engineering aspect, the hardware aspect is one thing that you know, it's a little bit difficult to figure out right now, but they wanted to first start with the brain, the cognitive sort of problem solving that. And that's what LLMs are solving. And the next step is sort of pairing LLM with the robotics. And we begin to see some use cases of that already, but I'm really excited to see what uh, this is going to look like moving. Now, the next thing that I'm going to be talking about is OpenAI made very big releases last week. They made the biggest release that we've been waiting for since last year, since they announced GPTs, they finally dropped the GPT store, which released with over 3 million apps. And this is just really uh, astonishing to see. Uh, all right. So if you are looking to build um, GPTs and you're looking to, you know, kind of get your GPTs out there and you're looking to where to start, I do have three videos that look at the main functionality of GPTs and all the how you can incorporate that into your app. I'm going to add a playlist in the description of this video so you can take a look at that and see exactly how you can build your own GPTs. Now, they talked about monetization happening sometime this quarter for US uh, users. So I think you should keep an eye on that one. So the other thing that OpenAI released, which is very, very exciting, is the ChatGPT for Teams. Now, ChatGPT for Teams basically makes it possible for you to manage access to ChatGPT for your workspace. So if you have an organization, you have a bunch of people, um, you know, especially for small organizations, because they do have ChatGPT Enterprise, which is for very, very large organizations. But I think this is for sort of small to mid-sized organizations. The other news that came up uh, last week, Anthropic dropped a new paper about training artificial intelligence models. And what they were looking at is if we train a, a model using deceptive uh, data or malicious data, um, how can we sort of prevent responses that come back have been influenced by that malicious data? So it turns out that these models can be programmed to act normally under certain conditions, but they can switch to harmful behaviors when triggered. So the shocking part of this is that deceptive behavior is still persisting even after the standard safety training. So this is something that is very, very important uh, as we sort of think about the safety of AI um, and how it can possibly go wrong as we use it. Uh, if for any reason uh, bad data is used or malicious data is used to train an LLM, um, there is a, every possibility that it could be used to cause a lot of harm. So I think this is something that 
everyone should be aware of and I'm sure organizations are taking uh, you know steps to see how to kind of curtail this now, now the final announcement from last week Well, it wasn't necessarily last week. This was this has been around since December But I think it started making the waves last week uh, was that Microsoft has released Autogen studio so they released if you remember last year they released Autogen which is basically a framework for building multi-agent applications now they have released the Autogen Studio, which is a no-code UI tool that allows you to build these um, multi-agent applications much, much easily. And I'll be diving deeper into this one to take a look at some of the use cases and how to use um, Autogen Studio in my next video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this rundown of all the stuff that's been going on uh, in the world of AI in the past week. If you enjoy this type of content, uh, you enjoy, uh, you know, kind of learning more about how to use generative AI to build real world applications, consider dropping us um, a like. Until next time, have a great one.